You wouldn't know it if you looked at it. But this farm is leading a revolution. The technology at work here is changing the pig farming industry as we know it. And it's doing it one pile of at a time. North Carolina is the nation's second leading pork producer with nearly $2 billion of revenue every year. But all those pigs also generate a nasty side effect, 13.5 billion cubic feet of methane. Here at Butler Farms, they found a way to turn all that gas into cold, hard cash. I'm getting the scoop on a new way to get filthy rich. Here's the stuff miracles are made of. Ugh, that is nauseating. I'm at Butler Farms in North Carolina, sniffing out how they're using the latest tech to bring hog farming into the 21st century. The whole thing starts at the back end of a pig. Will Butler, a member of the family that runs the place, tells me the farm basically runs a finishing operation. We're babysitters. Oh, I see. You babysit these pigs for how long? 20 weeks. 20 weeks. Yeah. You get attached to these things, I would think, huh? The first term we had, I had uh, one pig that followed me all over the whole farm, which was against all the rules. Uh, OK. So a pig is a smart animal, everyone says. Very smart. As smart as a dog, if not smarter. How can you tell? Oh, you can just tell by the personality. Good morning, boys and girls. How many pigs are in here right now? Probably 775. That's a lot of pigs. You are a contract farmer, right? Yes. Meaning what? These Hogs belong to someone else. We provide the buildings, the labor. I see. We take care of them, and we get paid by how much weight they gain. One key to raising fat and healthy hogs is keeping their house spick and span. And Will's entrusting me with an important part of that operation. Okay. So what am I doing here? Just moving the moving the poop out. Yeah. So basically, the idea here is to keep moving this poop out of the aisle way, and this is essentially the beginning of the system. As I'm pushing this manure through these cracks, so are the pigs. That's what you want right there. You got about, I don't know, a dozen and a half pigs right in front of me right here. You can see how much manure is being produced even as we stand here. That's all falling underneath as they stamp it through the cracks here. Little do you know what a sophisticated system you're a part of. There's 8,000 pigs all year round. That's a lot of fuel. And to see how they manage this unlimited power supply, I've got to look under the floorboard. So this is the end of the system here. Yeah, that's the hole. That's the plug. All right. Can I take this off of here? Sure. Just checking out your, uh, you know, your toilet here. That's all right with you. There we go. That's it right there. Here's the stuff miracles are made of. Ugh, my stomach is turning. But that is pig. Ugh, that is nauseating. OK, never buy that idea. <laughs> Can I step in there? Yeah, I wouldn't stick you above your boot. There, I'm on solid ground now. OK. We're solid <laughs> I'm standing in pig poop for a reason, to demonstrate how transportable this stuff is in this system. Nice and loose. I mean, it's very watery mix, actually. All of Butler Farm's 10 pig houses are built on elevated areas of the operation. At regular intervals, they pull the plugs on the collecting tanks, unleashing rivers of crap into a chain of three lagoons, covered by four acres of green tarp. Those tarps are the simple yet sophisticated innovation that may change hog farming forever. I'm walking on six million gallons of pig poop. Essentially, a pit of waste that used to be open before they closed it off with this, this plastic. The farm's 8,000 pigs generate roughly 10,000 gallons of manure a day. Will's dad, Tom, tells me that the two-inch thick cover helps keep the smells from all that pig excrement from going hog wild. I grew up in an area of New Jersey that had pig farming nearby, and it didn't smell so good. I mean, it was kind of famous for not smelling good. This smells great. But the tarps do much more than contain nasty aromas. They also capture gases. We are sequestering our CO2 and our CH4, our okay. methane, and we're actually using it to create electricity. To break down the excrement and generate the most methane possible, the waste is heated to around 100 degrees in the farm's 1 million gallon, 18 foot deep lagoon. After 21 days, when most of the methane has been released, the sludge drains into the two larger overflow lagoons. Here, any remaining gas will be captured and recirculated. Methane is collected and sent through these yellow pipes here and into that scrubber, which takes out the bad, foul smell, and sent right into that white house there, 
where they generate electricity. And here you go. This is the end result of the lagoon in the back, the digester that's making the methane that comes through this yellow pipe and becomes the gas that powers the generator. Waste to energy processes like this one have been used in the U.S. for at least 15 years. But poop to power projects are considered some of the cleanest. The Butler's generator currently can produce up to 180 kilowatts per day, enough to run an average fridge for nearly a year. Eventually, they hope to generate enough wattage for 53 homes. As gross as this is, you're looking at innovation. I mean, a really clever solution to a really gnarly problem. This is the future of animal farming in America. The butlers are vanguards of change. Instead of seeing their pig waste as an unfortunate problem, they've turned it into part of the solution.